Well, welcome again to the Arts HQ Gallery here in Surprise. Uh, my name is Michael and I'm the gallery director here. And I have the pleasure of interviewing and speaking with another great artist, Frank Williams, who is a uh, phenomenal sculptor. Uh, Frank, thank you for, for being with us today and uh, just talking with us and, and giving us a little bit more insight into who you are and your process. Um, I do want to just start off right off the bat. What's, well, uh, what's your inspiration? What, what drives you to do what you do as an artist? Well, I want to thank you and it's my pleasure to be here. Um, I guess my inspiration came, uh, it came originally from, from Chicago, grew up, born and raised in Chicago. Um, the high school I went to happened to have a, a full art program. Actually, you could major in art as a, and which which is unusual for high school. Yeah. It was one of two two high schools in Chicago that featured art as major. So, uh, the, I had the same art teacher from my freshman year till graduation, and he was a tremendously influential on on me. Um, all my art at that time was pen and ink, charcoal and pencil drawing. And I continued to do that uh, outside of high school. And when I, when I was in the military, traveled around Europe, continued to do sketching and, and pen and inks. And uh, after, after that, um, Real life kind of got in the way, <laughs> and I, you know, married, had children, uh, had to make a living, so uh, kind of fell away from art for quite a while. Uh, moved here to Arizona in 2003, and uh, was interested in 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 art and went to the Heard Museum and happened to see a display of uh, gourd art and gourds were something I, I had never seen or heard, heard of before and, until I, I went to that Heard Museum. Um, and I became fascinated by uh, most of the work was uh, traditional uh, and it didn't have a lot of uh, color, but it but it had intrigued me that that they could they could make art pieces from from these gourds, mm -hmm. and uh, the masks in particular were uh, what attracted me right away. So um, I went home and <clears throat> found out that there were some gourd farms here in. In, uh, in Arizona and uh, found a person that taught gourd art. So I took one lesson from, from her and uh, found out how to clean and, and color and, and carve, carve on them and, and do wood, wood engraving, uh, pyro engraving on them. So I kind of learned the basics uh, in, in one lesson and then um, decided that I wanted to try to create some contemporary mask art from, from the gourds. And, uh, and that's really uh, the mask part of it and, and what I do with the masks are pretty much self-taught. I've, I've experimented with a lot of different processes. Um, one of the things I've just touched on recently is uh, I found a material that can rust almost anything. And, and uh, it's a metallic based paint that has medical, metal particles in it. And when you apply it to almost any surface, uh, you can use a, a rust activator to, to rust it. And, so and it just creates different uh, 
textures and patterns that that you couldn't do any other way and you you don't always have control of the outcome because mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a chemical process but it, it's pretty interesting so I've incorporated that um, the um, I try to find some unique uh, elements to put into the my work, uh, for instance, this mask is here, has uh, Argus pheasant feathers. Now, Argus pheasant are, are not native to the U.S., but uh, like those are from Peru, actually. And uh, so I incorporate many types of articles that um, are not normally used for mask work and, and try to make it a little my own. Yeah, I find yeah. when I'm looking at your yeah. work, your mask in particular, I'm always finding something that I'm questioning myself, like questioning the artist. You know, where, <laughs> where are you getting these materials from? Yeah. Uh, do you, are some of your pieces uh, like maybe found objects and some uh, your procuring from from elsewhere where, where are you getting your yeah. materials to create with? well that especially uh, with my metal work it's all found found materials mostly uh, and that kind of evolved uh, from the gourds actually mm. uh, after I began doing masks I started broadening uh, out and and started doing vases and and eventually uh, started doing cairns. Um, this is an example of one, but originally the cairns I saw was on a hiking trip in Sedona. Mm -hmm. And they used cairns to mark, mark the trails, of the various trails. And, uh, and then later I was hiking in Utah and the same thing, they had some very elaborate ones in the Utah area. So, <clears throat> got the idea that so many of the stones and pieces, the elements that they were using to make these cairns were actually shaped like gourds. And um, so, again, it kind of triggered an idea to uh, try to make some of these gourds look like stones and start creating uh, cairns from, from gourds. Um, that in turn kind of led to some of them used, uh, I needed some metal to st structure and reinforce them because gourds are so light uh, they wouldn't stand up to the weather uh, without some sort of reinforcement so I started putting metal rods through them to keep them to you know keep them steady and, and withstand any weather elements and they can be used so they can be used outside. So these are, are these gourds that you have uh, kind of created to look like stones? Like stones, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. And uh, so having to incorporate the metal there kind of led to my having to learn how to weld. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you so taught yourself all of those skills. I <laughs> taught myself how to weld and, and then I began making metal pieces, metal sculptures as well, yeah. <laughs> Where, so. so how do you come up with an idea for a piece? Is it something <clears throat> out kind of in nature that inspires you or do you have uh, kind of an image or in your head that you are working from? Yeah, generally um, when I visit the gourd farms, um, I just peruse, you know, the uh, they, they have tremendously big bends of gourds to choose from and, and I normally don't go there with a particular um, piece in mind uh, unless I'm doing a commission piece but, but what I do is I'll just some, something about a particular gourd will catch my eye and I'll say and, and then I start start the wheels turning and thinking about um, what I could do with it and so <clears throat> and usually I'll, I'll leave the farm with 30 or 40 pieces that I've already started triggering some ideas with for yeah so it's almost like and, the, the item it, the gourd itself is 
is telling you what it wants to become. Yeah, so. it kind of speaks to you. And, yeah. and, and then, then I'll get home and, I, and I'll start doing some sketches of, of how I think I can enhance the, the, the gourd itself. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so wh where, have you, where have you shown your work? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, Arizona has a tremendous amount of outdoor art festivals and I've been involved in, in most of those. I've done some shows in Colorado, uh, New Mexico, California. Uh, I've been commissioned by the city of Surprise, uh, have a permanent art piece in, in, in their collection. Um, and I've done, done a few commission pieces for people outside the state. But, um, the, uh, the major art festivals, outdoor art festivals, um, have people coming from all over. So I have, uh, I have pieces in Florida, New York, and you know, a lot, lot, lot of Canadians mm -hmm. have bought my pieces, but yeah. yeah. A lot of your work uh, for me has sort of a, a native influence, and so I could imagine that you know, people back in maybe the East Coast or even outside of the country will be super in, interested yeah. in that because it's something they don't see every, right. every day. It's, I've got a couple pieces in Germany. And it's it's oh. uh, um, kind of interesting that the Germans gravitate toward the, the Western, Western art. Yeah. yeah. So looking at your kind of the, your entire collection that you have up until now, uh, is there a p piece or a series in particular that, uh, that you would want to be remembered for, that you think maybe is your defining moment of, of, of who you are as an artist? Um, a couple of years ago, I did a little series called Earth, Wind, and Fire, and three, three masks set. Uh, I, I didn't sell them as a set, so uh, wind is still available, but where the earth is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've been separated. They've been separated, yeah. So. Can you tell us a little bit more about those pieces and kind of what they represent? Uh, well, I think uh, I started actually doing fire first, and uh, fire was named because of the vast array of bright red uh, feathers that I, that I surrounded the entire uh, image with. And um, it be became so popular right away that I decided to do another piece uh, trying to use pretty much the same elements, um, but a totally different different image um, and then um, the, the colors in that were more earthy so it, that became earth so I had earth and fire and I had to get wind somewhere in between so uh, I did another one that had kind of uh, the, the, uh, the feathers I used there were were from a uh, uh, pheasant feathers. Uh, I've forgotten the name <laughs> right now, but but the the, uh, the, the feathers are kind of uh, wild and and kind of all over the place. What's so that the, became what's wind. Like the wind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. And as far as uh, metal work is concerned, um, this. Big guy right behind us is probably uh, one of my favorite pieces, uh, and, and that that was done with a patchwork of of metal that I all I welded together, and yeah, that was that was a fun piece to do. Now, is there an artist that uh, that inspires you that you uh, that speaks to you and kind of um, informs a little bit of about what you do? Um, <clears throat> there's not, I, I, for me, there's not many, many sculptors that 
that look like the the work that you do, and so yeah. Really uh, well, the, the the sculptures that I'm that I'm doing are kind of patterned off of some of the petroglyphs and some of the old uh, pieces that are displays that I've seen either in rocks or in, in uh, uh, replic replicated in museums or, or something. So, uh, you know, while I don't, I can't identify who mm -hmm. those artists were, uh, you know, those are the ones that give me the inspiration. We all, we all know kind of who they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're the people that, who were here long before we were. Uh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh. Do you have uh, space in your home, like studio space, uh, that you have set up to, to produce these works? And yeah, yeah how I've got do you, How do you manage that space? Is it wild and crazy, like some artists, or is it, it everything neat and in order? No, it's, it's pretty helter-skelter, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and because I, I've got, usually when I'm doing a uh, mask, like I did with, like I spoke of the, series of three, uh, I generally work on three or four pieces at a time, uh, only because there are down times waiting for colors to dry or textures to, to dry um, uh, with the rust, rust texture I do. It, that's like a three-step process. So um, there, you know, there's lots of downtime, so I'm, I'm working uh, from piece to piece while, while I'm doing that. And pretty much the same thing is true with welding. Uh, I'll, I'll be cutting and bending and welding metal pieces, uh, so I don't always do work on just one piece at a time. Uh, if I'm set up to do uh, bending, I'll you know, maybe bend for two or three pieces. Now these uh, these works that we have here in the gallery currently are they're pretty large. Yeah. Um, what's do you have a, a piece that are that is larger than these? How, how big have you gone? No, this is this this guy here is probably the biggest. Uh, All right. I should ask, how big do you want to go? Do you want to go uh, much bigger than these? I don't think so. <laughs> in fact, I've, I've kind of just from a. Uh, logistical standpoint, um, it's really difficult to get these guys to shows, <laughs> yeah, that's true. and so I've kind of scaled down. And and some of the other things you'll see in here are much more manageable, and uh, yeah, so and they're they're all fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I do a lot of paintings, abstract art, and sometimes I have really grandiose ideas, and I I want to I want to see how big I can get it yeah, well, before I can you know, not able to get it through the front door. Well, abstract lends itself to, to yeah. big, you know, yeah. I just want to, I want people to be enveloped in a painting, so. Yep. I'm always thinking big, yeah. but not, not many artists do that. Yeah. <laughs> Some artists actually want to go the opposite direction, go a little bit, yeah. see no, how small they can go. This, this guy here was a, a project, I mean, because all the, uh, the patchwork metal that's there was, was all cut or scrapped from from some other work, and and uh, and this became a probably a, a month long or so project. And, yeah. So, in thinking about uh, emerging artists, up and coming artists, uh, is there any advice that you can give to those artists? Um, have fun with what you do. I mean, it's it's. Uh, uh, it, it's got to be uh, something you enjoy doing, and and uh, you you get personal satisfaction and fulfillment from what you do, and and that's where it all has to start. I think you have to you have to please yourself before you can please other other oh, yeah. people, and and uh, I think if you follow follow your feelings, mm -hmm. uh, you'll become. You'll become good at what you do. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. Uh, do you have a routine?
routine that you have for creating your works, um, something that helps you kind of get in the get in the mood, if you will, for creating works, or is are you able to just kind of jump in and, and, and go at it? Um, I think that kind of it varies from piece to piece. There there are some pieces that I start on and I. I can't get through them fast enough. I, I you know, I, I keep saying, okay, can we get 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 onto this or, or whatever. And and um, and there are others that are are more exact. I, I'll I'll have a exact sketch of what I what I want to do, and and uh, so it it kind of varies. Um, no no set routine. Yeah, that's good. You know? <laughs> I know I have for myself. I usually have a routine of uh, just making sure my, my space is, is organized and kind of ready for me to create. Yeah. Um, if there's a lot of chaos in my environment, I, I can't really jump into a piece. Um, I know some artists are like that, but yeah. other artists can just work in chaos. They can just jump right in and that's, that's great. I wish I, <laughs> I, wish I had that ability because there's always a lot of chaos in life, so. Yeah, um, there, like I said, there are times where I just, I can't work fast enough because I've got so many mm -hmm. things go going through my head. Uh, I have, have to get it done. <laughs> you know? uh, so the, art, the, the artist life is one that is, um, it's, a, it's a difficult career choice. And so has there ever been a moment in your career as an artist that you've kind of questioned what you've done, uh, questioned what you've gotten into? Like, should I, should I really be doing this? Uh, is there something else? that I should be doing with my time or? Well, I, I think uh, th this went all the way back to high school. Uh, the art teacher I spoke of in, in high school had <clears throat> found an outlet for s some of my work r right away. And, and the idea that you could actually get paid for something, you know, it's like a, like a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing something you love to do. And, People are willing to pay you to do it. It's um, it's it's very fulfilling, and and, uh, and and as I said, if you enjoy it and uh, and you love what you're doing, um, the the rest is is just uh, it's it's you know <laughs> it's it makes it fulfilling whether or not you're getting paid to do it. You know. So when you went to, you were in the military, correct? Yes. Um, did you do a lot of uh, art while you were in the, the military? Uh, mostly just sketching. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be on the baseball team in the Army. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I traveled, traveled a lot and had a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. So uh, I continued to do sketching and uh, it was mostly landscape castles and and that sort of thing uh, because we were based in frankfurt germany and and uh, <clears throat> uh, spent a lot of time on the rhine rhine river and uh, there are castles up and down the rhine that i sketched up. Um, usually we would travel in a in a bus from one place to the other to play uh, but i would remember passing through places that I, I kind of kept in my mind or, or would <clears throat> ask our driver to stop for a second for me to take a, a photo of it, you know. Yeah. Did you find it, that it was difficult to kind of come back um, kind of in the, the military uh, part of your life and, and, and jump back into to other art forms, painting, uh, photography, sculpture? Photography, definitely, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, and then as I said, on the, after I left the military and, and had to start thinking about, about what was going to happen in life, uh, uh, it, it, and back then it was the uh, time when you were drafted, so you didn't have a say as to whether or not you're, you're going to spend some military time. But, uh, and it kind of, <clears throat> came at an age where um, it, it kind of interrupted the process of, of how you were going to 
you know, lay out your your lifestyle. And, and uh, so, um, I I felt like uh, when I got back, it was already too late to to uh, to get too much of a formal education. So I began uh, in sales and and uh, and just uh, worked out a pretty good livelihood from that, but. Uh, <clears throat> art had to kind of take a second, you know. Yep. Had, to, yeah. had to take a step back for a yeah. <laughs> I think we uh, all artists have had <clears throat> to make that decision at, yeah. at some point. Um, so in the world of technology, which the world's quickly moving to, if not already there, uh, is there a lot of, uh, is, is there technology that you use for your uh, pieces, e either creating them or uh, finding inspiration, imagery. Um, no, no, well, I, you know, I guess there, there are always uh, new elements that you you find to put into. It. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, the rusting technique that I talked about. It's it's chemically, and it, I, you know, I don't know that. Of course, rust has been along for for a long time, but to create it chemically on a, almost any surface is a relatively new technology, I think. And and uh, so I've been playing with that. And <clears throat> I guess with some of my welding, um, because I'm self-taught, uh, um, I'm not sure, but I, I think, for instance, the, the little welder I have now is. Uh, weighs about 30 pounds and yet it, it can weld pretty heavy metal so that technology I'm sure has advanced quite a bit from you know from times back but uh, most of the stuff I'm, um, I'm taking advantage of but I, I, I guess n haven't thought through how technologically how, how, how advanced it is. You know. There's, there's so much out there. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much to try. Yeah. Is there anything that you um, creatively feel like you haven't tried yet that, you, uh, that you're interested in, that you want to try to learn a technique or learn a style? Is there anything out there like that for you? Uh, well, I, uh, some of the metal work I've, I've just recently started incorporating some more contemporary pieces. So th that's... I think my next endeavor is to try to get uh, more con creative with, with uh, get away from the traditional type stuff and, and start doing some <laughs> contemporary. So in thinking about your uh, body of work, your collection, uh, is there a piece that, that you want to be remembered for? That's your favorite, that's your shining moment? Uh, I haven't thought much about that, but um, I, I'm encouraged uh, when I do shows or um, my work is displayed in, in a gallery such as this, um, I like to observe the people that are, that are looking at uh, the different pieces and, and uh, Invariably, I see a smile come to a face when they see a, a mask that the personality of the mask might strike them, or, or certainly with the the Cairns, um, they're kind of whimsical, and and people, uh, you know, I've often had people say to me, "You're you're having way too much fun with this, aren't, aren't you?" And I say, that's "Yeah, be, yeah." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's what I'd, I'd like to be remembered for. Uh, why do you love doing what you do? What what drives you uh, just to continue creating? In any it, man, it's rewarding for me personally, um, as, as I just expressed with uh, people uh, bringing a, a smile to their face or, uh, uh, you know, most of my work is kind of whimsical, I guess, and, and um, it, it's it's fun to have fun and and uh, enjoy it and know that people enjoy what you do you know well thank you so much i've 
really enjoyed uh, getting to know you and getting to know your work uh, just a little bit better today. Uh, and thank, thank everyone for just listening to Frank today and uh, hearing about his process and um, just about all of the, the beautiful, beautiful things that he creates. Um, I hope that you will come to the gallery soon uh, and view his work. It will be up through September. Um, when we also have a, uh, one of his pieces in our courtyard. So thank you and appreciate you guys.